In September 2019, and in 363 AD, Thoth's Emerald Tablets were secretly released. This is the knowledge Thoth himself claims to have used to initiate as Hermes Trismegistus, his most prominent initiate, the Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Per Thoth's own written testimony, the Great Pyramid is a temple of initiation where Jesus Christ was initiated, and the Temple of the Sun in Mexico, where Jesus Christ initiated the lost Mayan civilization as the reborn Quetzalcoatl, whose greatest accomplishment after his resurrection was initiating and successfully ascending the whole living civilization, leaving no trace behind the civilization of the disappeared, Maya whose name directly signifies how they transcended the illusion of this world, thanks to Jesus Christ self as the resurrected Quetzalcoatl, who in both Mayan and Spanish conquistador texts emphasized for clarity was a resurrected God, reborn a second time. Testimonies collected and secreted away into the Vatican. This is the knowledge of Thoth's emerald tablets, which Jesus Christ desired to share but twisted by the Freemasons of the Masonic Lodges, who use this knowledge for their own gain. The basis of the magic science of Quetzalcoatl is dualism, the duality of the human body Tonal and the soul Nagual. These exist as polarities of one another, wherein Tonal, the body, represents mortality and the light, while the Nagual soul represents immortality and the dark. These contradictions of light, dark, mortality, immortality, body, soul, are harmonized as all polarities get harmonized by the mind. They coexist in a mutually beneficial relationship. They cannot be without the other. The mind exists as the line where these seeming contradictions meet indicating that fundamental to dualism is the mind is the source of all dualities. Thus, all dualities, polarities, and contradictions come not only from the same source, but the mind is that source. The greatest struggle for the children of man, as Thothi Atlantean puts it, will always be against his own mind. The mind is not one's enemy, but if one does not control their own mind, someone else will, and the bondages that keep the children of men bound to the fetters of darkness multiply. The only way to freedom is taming one's mind, and that is by balancing the polarity of the tonal body and nagual soul. Quetzalcoatl teaches this is done first by balancing the light mortal side of the tonal right side, the right side taking the same name as that of the body. Tonal, and the Nawal left side of the immortal dark side. This is also reflected in the Chinese Yin Yang, the Hindu Ida Pingala, and Egyptian Isis Osiris. While the Egyptian Thoth is the mind and the Mexican Quetzalcoatl is the heart, wherein the soul sits, who then is the Tonal body? Across the Atlantic lies another emerald of Thoth, once claimed as another Atlantean colony by this very priest king, as beyond belief as his tablets. It is, of course, the Emerald Isle of Thoth. On this land live the pre-Celtic druids who are not white people. They are red-headed Atlanteans, not cock Asians. And this is an incredibly important racialistic distinction to make, as it underscores why the cock asses were so eager to dominate over them, like the Romans, and the worst of them all, St. Patrick. The Druidic fourfold tree of life, astronomy and ways of life, from the Emerald Isle of Atlantis, was one piece of a puzzle that fulfilled the higher mind of Egypt and the heart of Mexico by giving them both a body to root them. Evidence that the pre-Celtic Druids and Mexican Egyptians were cultures founded by the one and same Thoth the Atlantean priest-king 
is further reflected in the fact that all three cultures had sophisticated 13 sun-based calendars based on 365 days precisely and both had a separate 20-day moon-based calendar reflected in the Druidic Ogums and the Mayan Uinal. All three cultures had sophisticated dual and unique sun and moon calendars they each wove together into intercalary calendars. If you believe they did so independently of each other, and all these similarities are just coincidence, you are so cute, it's stupid. All three cultures functioned under the same intercalary calendars, based on the same sun and moon numbers, symbology, and principles. The Egyptians reflected the 13 sun-based calendar upon the beetle, whose body parts make 13, six legs, two wings, the shoulders, the head, two eyes, or mouth pincers. These 13 parts used universally across all hieroglyphs and images of the scarab beetle secretly reflect the 13 divisions of the heavens, the 13 joints in the human body, the 13 full moons in one calendar year, the 13 annual menstrual cycles, the complete 13 chakras, and the scarab beetle is ubiquitously represented holding the sun and moon in nature. Beetles, like the ever-present dung beetle in Egypt, form perfect circular spheres of dung, or elephant poop, which is also fertilizer and a rich source for new vegetation and life, like Gaia. Gaia is herself one big ball of dung, so fecund fertile. Thus, the ancient Egyptian scarab beetle perfectly encapsulates the 13 heavenly divisions upon its main 13 parts and forms, a perfect 3D sphere of fertilizer in nature, equally echoed in the sun and moon, oft depicted with the Egyptian scarab beetle. The Druid Celts divided their 13 tree sign astrology called the Tree of Life into the four treasures of the Stone of Destiny, the Sword of Decisiveness, the Spear of Initiative, and the Cauldron of Abundance. The Maya also codified 13 sun signs or Ovedios that formed their Tree of the World astrology and divided the 13 heavenly poderios into the four natural colors of corn to reflect the four races of men, white, yellow, red, and black, each of which represents one side of the Mayan compass. The black race, the west, the white race, the north, the yellow race, the south, and the red race, the east. The world tree of the Maya is divided into four quadrants through which the celestial serpent passes in the next occult secrets revealed, we will uncover the world tree of the Maya and how the tests and challenges of incarnating into this world, called His Underworld, are meant to illuminate the seven radiances of Quetzalcoatl's feathers, thoths, seven boards of our inner flowers of fire, or the seven Hindu chakras. Because only with mastering His Underworld can we rise back up to her heavens, her realm above, and our first and true roots. Curious about your true sun and moon signs? Discover the precise NASA-based coordinates of your 12 planets across the 13 signs which reveal which Mayan joint and Hindu chakras are already powerfully activated in you and a full numerology breakdown. The revelations of your signs, planets, numbers, and letters Synthesize one powerful inoculation against all forms of attack, whether psychic, spiritual, physical, and cures all one's ills and maladies, like lack of love, health, money, joy, happiness, and purpose. Reserve your natal Christo serpent astronomy report now, before spaces fill up. Think you are ready to bloom new the star in you? Join the Occult Secrets Revealed Chakra Activation and Kundalini Journey course for just $4.99 a month, through which you will gain access to the secret Masonic Rites 
and teachings born from the mouth of those, and used by the same Koinobi priesthood of Egypt, who initiated Jesus Christ himself. Like any initiate, arm yourself with knowledge and bind all your spiritual forces to you through a 108 bead mala that incorporates the mystical powers of 108, the pyramid force of four, the druidic tree of life cross, and the cross of Quetzalcoatl. And for all of August 2023, enjoy a total of 33% off and free shipping on all orders. Visit the Occult Secrets Revealed shop now. This video is dedicated to all the children of the Emerald Isle of Atlantis and Shanae O'Connor, who sat best, as she always did, the following. I want to talk about Ireland. Specifically, I want to talk about the famine, about the fact that there never really was one. There was no famine. See, Irish people were only allowed to eat potatoes. All of the other food, meat, fish, vegetables, were shipped out of the country under armed guard to England, while the Irish people starved. And then, on the middle of all this, they gave us money not to teach our children Irish. And so we lost our history. And this is what I think is still hurting me. You see, we're like a child that's been battered. Has to drive itself out of its head because it's frightened. Still feels all the painful feelings. And this leads to massive self-destruction. Alcoholism. Drug addiction. All desperate attempts at running. And in its worst form, becomes actual killing. And if there ever is going to be healing, there has to be remembering and then grieving so that there can then be forgiving. There has to be knowledge and understanding. May you rise in peace. And until next time, trust and believe that it is okay to be you, the most beautiful you there ever was, there is, and that there ever will be, because you are not a story that can be told twice, and there will never again be a stage for you to perform, but this one, right here, right now, so be you, the most beautiful you.